What is reactive power? I'm going to use this circuit as an example to help me explain. But first of all, we need to understand what power is. So electrical power, I'm going to use little p, equals the electrical energy flow. So that's dw dt. So this is energy over time, the change. So it's a power flow. And that's really going to be absolutely critical for this. Now we can write this as dw dq uh, times dq dt. And this is the energy per charge, which is the voltage. And this is the charge per time, which is the current. So this is voltage times current. So now let's look at our circuit and think about the power that's flowing into the circuit from the source. So let's sketch some plots. Let's assume that the voltage at the supply starts at zero and then goes up to a constant value for a period of time. So this sudden jump creates a voltage drop across this resistor and so current will start flowing through the resistor. That means electrons are being drawn off the top plate of this capacitor. And for more information about capacitors, there's a video on the channel. You can check out the link in the description below that explains this in more detail. So as these electrons are drawn off the plate, the voltage will increase across the capacitor. So here we have the voltage across the capacitor and that will start to increase and that will then reach the same voltage that the source has gone to. At the same time, while this increases, the voltage drop across the resistor is getting less. So the current that was initially from the jump will also start to decrease. So here we have the current decreasing. Now, what has this effect on the power? So we're looking at the power across these terminals here. So it's Vs times I. So we just have to multiply Vs times I to get the power that's from the source. So this curve here will look like uh, this coming down from here and this will also go to zero. Now, what about the power that's being dissipated in the load? Well, as the current goes through the resistor, it is turning that electrical energy into some other form of energy. It might be light if it's a light bulb, it might be heat, or it might be kinetic energy if this resistor is part of some machinery that's making uh, things move. So this power here also goes up and then comes down, but it doesn't go up as high as the power from the source. So why is that? Well, the power here is Vs times I, and the power in the load is I squared times R. So when we compare these, there's an I and an I squared. Well, we know that Vs is going to be bigger than IR. Because, how do we know this? Because IR is the voltage drop across this resistor, and its maximum value is going to be Vs for all other times the current is less, and so the voltage drop is less. And so this power here that's dissipated in the load is less than the power coming from the source. It's also important to point out that this voltage going up on the capacitor is because there is charge being stored on the capacitor. As the electrons moved off the top plate, electrons were being brought into the bottom plate, which was storing electrical energy in the capacitor. So we've had power flow into the circuit, some of it which was dissipated in the resistor, but some of it is stored in the capacitor. Okay, so now let's think of what happens when the voltage source changes. So let's say the voltage drops to a value, another constant value, but a lower value. So what is gonna happen now? Well, all the same things as before, except where this was an increase in voltage, this is a decrease in voltage. So now the voltage at the source is going to be lower than the voltage at the capacitor. So now there will be a current flowing in the other direction. So now we have current that is negative on this plot. It's in the other direction. What happens when that starts flowing? Well, that means that electrons are returning to the top plate, which means the voltage across the capacitor is going to decrease. So that voltage is going to decrease until it 
gets to the same voltage that the source got to, at which time there's no voltage drop across the resistor and zero current. What happens with the power? So the power in the source, again, well, it's simply Vs times I. So the power in the source is now negative. And that means that power is flowing back into the source. That means energy is returning to the source from the circuit. What about what's happening in the load? Well, the current is going in the other direction, but because this is I squared, the fact that it's negative doesn't matter and we still get energy dissipated in the resistor. So now let's think of what's happened overall. We, we put energy into the circuit. Some of it was dissipated, some of it was stored. And then when this voltage went down, energy came back into the source. Some of it did uh, here with power flow, but also some more energy was dissipated in the resistor. So not all of the energy that entered the circuit re-entered the source. And this is really the key to reactive power. So now let's think about this when the input is a sinusoidal input, not these step changes. But by thinking about the step changes, it hopefully will help you to visualize what happens when it's a sinusoid. So one important thing in terms of sinusoids to realize is this current here is not exactly matching the voltage. And that, when you have a sinusoidal input, that results in a phase difference between the voltage and the current. So here we have equations for the voltage and the current when you have a sinusoidal input as the voltage. And here we've used a time reference such that the current has zero phase. And without losing any generality, we can write the phase of the voltage as alpha. And this leads to this equation for power simply by multiplying these two together. And then you can use a trigonometric expression to get two terms, uh, one of which in this case is a constant. It does not depend on time. And the other one does depend on time. And for more information on this and visualizations of these with graphs and plots and so on, you can check out a video in the description below on the channel that is all about instantaneous power. And I'd encourage you to do that if you are new to seeing these equations. And what you can see directly now is that this constant term here is the average power that is delivered into the circuit. This term here is a cos wave. It goes up and down between positive and negative. Its average is zero over time. So this term here is the average power delivered to the circuit. And electrical engineers call this the active power. So now let's look at some plots to get a visual on this for different values of alpha. When alpha equals zero, the here the cos of zero is one. And so this term is the most it can be. This term is never bigger than Vm Im on two. So it's never bigger than this number here. So the overall power can never be negative, even when this goes into its negative swing of the cos function. So that's what we see here. It's always positive power. That means there's always a flow of energy into the circuit. When alpha equals 60, we see this effect. And here we have that the peak power is lower than over here because now the average power is lower because cos of 60 is less than one. So this number here will be less than this value here at its peak. And so we see this thing. And of course here, as we expect, when we have the phase offset, the, there are negative values of the power and that means energy is being returned into the source. So I've just written here the value for the peak power. When this is a plus, you have the peak at the positive peak. And when this is a negative, uh, cos of alpha will be less than one. So this number here will be less than one. And this number now gives you the values of these uh, negatives. The peak instantaneous negative power. So that is the peak power being returned into the source. And to understand a bit more about what's going on in the sinusoidal case, let's think back to our example here where the source underwent step changes at this slow rate. Now let's imagine that the source, instead of a big step and then waiting for a long time with another step where there was time for the circuit to settle, let's imagine now that these steps are very close together and they are sort of incrementally stepping up and incrementally stepping down. Then we have the 
example that in a limit becomes the sinusoid. And so we can see here exactly the same thinking that we had over here is happening but just on a faster time scale with smaller shorter steps from the source. So now it's still the case that the current the, the capacitor voltage will be lagging behind the source voltage. And as the source voltage is going up, the capacitor voltage is going up at a slower rate. When the source voltage starts going down, the capacitor voltage will start going down, but in a smoothed out fashion, always lagging behind the changes from the source. So you can see here that we really have everything we need to know about these circuits. We know what the average power is that's being dissipated in the circuit. And if we know about the phase difference, then we know about how much power is at its peak being returned into the source. So what is reactive power? If we have everything we need to know here, why is there a concept called reactive power? And what is it? Well, it's simply a reformulation of this equation. So now that you understand all of this, I think we should be able to get directly to reactive power. Here's the rewritten version of this. So this term here, we're going to call capital P. That is the active power capital P. So the instantaneous power is P, that's this term here. And then if we use trigonometric expression on this one, we can rewrite the cos wave form in terms of, with a phase offset, in terms of a cos component and a sine component. And this is a result direct from Fourier transforms. So if you want to know more about Fourier transforms, again, look in the description below. There's other videos on the channel. We can see here that by doing this, it turns out that the cos term has an amplitude of P, exactly the active power. And the sine term has an amplitude of Vm Im on 2 times sine alpha. Whereas P was cos alpha, Q is sine alpha. And this term here is what's called the reactive power. The reactive power is the amplitude of a sinusoidal component of the instantaneous power that exists when there are devices in a circuit that store energy. Now that's a bit of a mouthful. We just break that down again. It's the amplitude of the sinusoidal component of instantaneous power that exists when there are devices in the circuit. Here we have a capacitive device that stores energy. That is when you get this term and we're going to call this term reactive power. This term does not exist if the circuit only has resistive elements. That's this case here when alpha equals zero and the current and voltage are in phase. Importantly, this reactive power is not the power that is stored in the capacitors and inductors, which is what many people say that it is. Q is the amplitude of a sinusoidal component of the instantaneous power that exists when you have these charge storing devices in your circuit. It's also not imaginary power. It is not something that's just made up by mathematicians. It is a real component of the real instantaneous power. So hopefully this has given you more insights into power in electrical circuits and in particular reactive power. Something often confuses people. If it has, please like the channel. It helps others to find it. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos. And as I've said, check out the description below. You'll find more videos, including a link to a web page that has a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.